Welcome back to Power and Politics. Scrapping the controversial long gun registry has long been a Conservative Party priority over a decade. They came very close to killing it last fall with the Conservative MP Candace Hetner's private members bill, you remember that. Now that they have a majority, how soon will the Conservatives bring a vote before the House to get rid of the long gun registry? Is there anything supporters of the long gun registry can do now to save it or is this just a done deal? Welcome to the new world of a majority. Joining me now from Winnipeg, the Conservative MP James Bazan is here. In St. John's, the NDP MP Jack Harris. And in Toronto, the Liberal MP John McCallum. All three of you, good to see you. And I know you've all won your ridings. Congratulations so soon after the election. Thanks, Evan. Thank you so much. Thank you, Evan. Uh, this issue, we know what uh, we're trying to figure out, James Bazan, how soon the Conservative government will act on this. A group calling themselves Mothers of gun violence victims put out a statement today ahead of Mother's Day calling on Canadians to nonetheless try to save the long gun registry. I'll just read you a bit of this statement. Here's part of what they say. Our gun control law is the result of at least six public inquests into tragedies which have emphasized the importance of licensing gun owners and registering all firearms. These measures represent a small inconvenience for the privilege of owning a gun. Gun death and injury, particularly with rifles and shotguns, has declined dramatically since these controls were strengthened. Mr. Bazan, how soon, despite this concern, how soon will the Conservative government act to try to kill the long gun registry? Well, as you know, Evan, it was part of our platform and something that we've campaigned on for the last uh, five elections. And we said all along that this was going to be a priority. I'm hoping that we'll be tabling legislation uh, as soon as we get back along with the budget, which is, of course, our first priority, and, and also putting together our comprehensive uh, legislation on uh, law and order. So we are going to pursue those aspects, uh, but the, the gun bill, getting rid of the long gun registry, will be the first, uh, one of the first steps that we do take. I must say, you know, the things that actually reduce gun violence and, and gun crime is some of the things that we started to do uh, back under Kim Campbell which is bringing them first uh, the firearm acquisition certificate which has been replaced now with the possession and acquisition license uh, to make sure that we have proper screening and firearms training for all gun owners and so that's the reason not the gun registry itself but the training the safe storage and handling of firearms is a real reason why we've seen a reduction in uh, accidents and shootings caused by long guns uh, so we don't want to no longer penalize farmers and hunters and outdoor sports enthusiasts it's time to invest those resources. Over $2 billion have been wasted on the long gun registry and put that into actual policing and enforcement and getting the illegal guns off the street, the Glocks and the Midnight Specials that are smuggled up here uh, from the United States. So just so I understand clearly, you said it's one of the first priorities. Are we talking about uh, before the summer or after the summer? When, when will something be introduced? That I couldn't tell you. My hope is that we would uh, table that legislation before we go for summer break. Um, but, you know, the priority is first the law and order agenda and getting our budget passed and uh, the long gun registry bill will follow shortly after that, I would suspect. Jack Harris, you're hearing that. Uh, some hopes that this gets tabled even before the summer break. The NDP has had a very public uh, split on the long gun registry, as we know. It was saved last fall by NDP MPs who flipped their votes. Remember, it was, I think it was 153 to keep it and 151 to kill it. Uh, the NDP promised to try and bridge the divide on the gun registry. But what can you do now as official opposition in the face of a majority that clearly wants this done? Well, first of all, uh, the majority of Canadians are, uh, are want to have gun control, and we propose measures uh, that we are in agreement on uh, to actually fix the registry. Uh, the Conservatives made no attempt whatsoever to solve any of the problems. They've continued with disinformation about this. And if Mr. Harper was to be believed on, uh, on election night, uh, he said that he intended to govern understanding that he uh, was to govern on behalf of all Canadians. Well, two-thirds of Canadians think it's important to have gun control, uh, and uh, we want to have measures to, to do that. So if legislation is brought in, obviously we will seek to amend it to uh, actually fix the, the problems that exist uh, and, uh, and, and do it that way. But we're going to continue to do that because we believe that uh, Canadians want to have a registry that works. John McCallum, let me get your perspective. Several of your former Liberal colleagues, they were frankly targeted over this issue. They lost their seats on Monday. Let's think about Larry Bagnell in Yukon, Jean-Claude Damour in New Brunswick, Anthony Rota 
fighting for a recount in uh, northern Ontario, Mark Holland and uh, Ajax. Uh, did this issue hurt the Liberals in the campaign? It, may, it would have hurt certain people, but it just shows the depth of our commitment to the, preserving the gun registry, which saves, saves lives and which is supported by police forces across the country. And I think this is a, a critical test of Mr. Harper's statement that he will govern for all Canadians. If he meant that, then what he should do is find an honourable compromise, uh, for example, decriminalizing first offences and uh, simplifying it, and that would then mean that he was serious when he said he would govern for all Canadians and not just those who uh, voted for him. If he scraps it, then he'll be governing from the hard right and appealing only to his narrow base. So this is a critical test. But is it? But is it a test? Yeah, it's a majority government. I'll put it to you, uh, um, Mr. Harris, as well, and get back to James Pizan in a second. They campaigned on it. They got elected to a majority. Is that fair for them to say, look, we, we didn't hide this. You knew our position. The majority, uh, you know, we have a majority government. We have 40% plurality, enough for a majority. We're going to get it. I'm not well, denying the they really can get it. They have the votes. The question is whether they will honor Mr. Harper's statement that he will govern for all Canadians find a compromise when two-thirds of Canadians clearly want to keep this gun registry, which has proved to save lives. Jack Harris? Well, you know, obviously uh, we have a situation where Mr. Harper has a majority of the seats, but it's what the constitutionalists call a false majority because he doesn't have a majority of, of the popular vote. Uh, so his mandate has to be taken into consideration. Everything that they put in their platform, uh, he can't claim a mandate from for the Canadian people because he has uh, a majority of the seats. He has to govern uh, with the fact in mind that 60% of the people uh, voted against uh, his, uh, his government and his policies. So uh, uh, it, it has to be a question as to whether or not uh, that this matter can be dealt with by fixing the, what the, the problems are uh, reaching a uh, uh, responding to amendments that could be proposed. We propose uh, at least 10 measures that would uh, soften the, the concerns, that legitimate concerns that uh, people have had about this registry, uh, affect a compromise that will work, uh, and do this. So uh, it is uh, it is going to be interesting to see whether they take the hard line and, and say we're, we're governing for the uh, for the, uh, the the 40 percent of the people who voted for us uh, on the basis of something like that. Uh, you know, if this was such a priority for the, the gov for the Conservatives, uh, we would have had uh, government bills long before this. They've been in power for five years, so I don't see why uh, this should, 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 they should be in such a hurry uh, to cause division uh, right after the uh, right after the James election. James Bazan, when you listen to this, you know the other parties are saying pretty clearly. You do have a majority, but there's still only 40% of the Canadian people voted uh, for the Conservatives. Stephen Harper did say he would try to govern for all Canadians. Any room for compromise on what is clearly a hot-button issue that is very divisive? Look, we've been very clear right through the entire campaign and, and during the past uh, several years. We've been saying we need to get rid of the long gun registry and invest those dollars in proper policing uh, to ensure that we can uh, target the criminals not the innocent and law-abiding farmers, hunters, and sports enthusiasts. So we need to uh, really target those resources. You know, the Liberals, the reason they're down to 35 seats and the reason that they don't have any representation left in rural Canada is just because of exactly the thing that, that John McCollum's been talking about. Uh, it, you know, he should be listening to people like Anthony Rhoda, uh, Todd Russell, and Larry Bagnell, who didn't want to change their votes, but got whipped by Michael Ignatieff to, to, to flip-flop on the gun registry. So that's why they're sitting today uh, without a seat in the House of Commons. And, you know, Jack needs to be talking to his colleagues like John Rafferty, Nikki Ashton, and uh, Bruce Heyer, who voted with us to get rid of the long gun registry. They know it's broken. You know, Liberals and NDP members across rural Canada oppose the long gun registry as well. But and is there I no room for compromise? I mean, uh, both parties, the NDP and the Liberals, have both put forward some compromises on that. Any room for compromise on the Conservative part, or is it scrap it, whole and done, that's it? You know, this all has to go through the legislative process. It's going to go to committee where we'll hear from experts, where there's going to be an opportunity for, for the opposition to have input. And that's where those types of compromises can be made. And, 
as a former committee chair, uh, I've always made sure that, that I had an open ear to what the opposition was saying, and I know that that's going to be the same thing in, in this parliament, in the 41st parliament, as it was in the 40th and the 39th parliament, that there's always room for compromise and negotiation. But I can tell you this, that the very fundamentals and the principles surrounding the long gun registry, the need to register every firearm that's non-restricted, uh, is, is something that's going to go by the wayside, and we need to look at other ways and making sure, like when the, when the police do, 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 you know, the police agencies and the police officers do their searches uh, for criminal background checks or license plate runs or whether or not a home has any firearms. What they're searching is not the long gun registry. They're searching whether or not the individual is a registered firearms owner. No, I, that's I, I, not changing, uh, and that's going to be still in place. Yeah, I got.